Right lads, so welcome back. In uh, this video we're going to be covering in far more detail the exterior of the T-54. Right, so points we're going to be focusing on are the hull of the vehicle, the main cannon, the turret, and the aircraft anti-aircraft machine gun on top. These are all features that will help us determine or at least estimate when this version of the T-54 was made. Okay, so let's get right to talking about the features. Some of you guys might have already noticed this hole right here drilled into the front of the tank. Now, this actually wasn't because of the demilitarizing process that this tank went through, but is actually a feature of the T-54 series of vehicles. This hole is actually for a SGMT machine gun chambered in 7.62x54R. The driver can fire out the front of the tank. Now, the armor itself is 120 millimeters thick of rolled homogeneous steel armor sloped at 60 degrees. The, uh, the T-54 represented 10 years of continuous tank development by the Soviet Union. A lot of its features were inherited directly in line of descent from the T-34. One of these babies scared NATO witless during the Hungarian Revolution when one was driven onto British Embassy grounds and they got a chance to examine it. That led directly to the development of the L7 cannon deployed in Leopards and other vehicles by, designed by the Royal Ordnance Factories. Right, so let's continue on to the side and talk about the armor and other features we'll find there too. Okay, so now we're at the side of the tank. Here's some numbers for you guys. We've got 160 millimeters of sloped armor on the side of the turret, and on the side of the hull, we've got 80 millimeters of armor. Again, another direct uh, descendant from the T-34 is the lack of return rollers down here on the tracks. However, one of the most notable points of contention between Johan and I, and many other people, is these external fuel tanks. As you guys have noticed, along the right side of the T-54 are three external fuel tanks full of diesel fuel. Now, that one might not be too bad, but these two over here are directly beside the engine bay. And they're exposed, which means they can be shot at, they can be hit by shrapnel, they can be exposed to many, many different things. And this can be a big problem because while diesel fuel is hard to ignite, it can still ignite. Now, if something happened where diesel fuel leaked into the engine compartment or somehow covered the engine compartment and ignited, you'd have a very big problem because you'd have to stop the whole tank and it would be a mobility kill. If you were on the battlefield, you would most likely be screwed. With that said, let's continue on to the back and talk about what's there. Okay, so now here we are at the back of the T-54. Some more numbers for you guys first. We've got 65 millimeters of armor on the rear of the turret, 45 millimeters of armor on the back of the hull, and 30 millimeters of armor on the top of the chassis. So now, as you can see, we've got all the engine, the engine completely exposed here. So what we can see are the manual shutters for the radiators here, the radiator itself, and below me is the Soviet designated V-54 diesel engine. It's got 12 cylinders, produces 520 horsepower, and gets the T-54 going at 50 kilometers per hour on the road. It's got a range of 500 kilometers, but if you use auxiliary fuel tanks, you can go well beyond that. Usually they're mounted on the back of the jet. As you can see inside, it's all mechanical. There are no electronic gear shifts or anything like that, which you would see on a Leopard tank, for example. It's all mechanical, and it makes it very simple to repair this tank. So we've got the linkages for the five forward gears and one reverse gear, and we've also got the radiator fan, which drags air through the radiators and expels it out the top. Now, onto the front of the turret. Okay, so we're back at the front of the tank, but this time we're here to talk specifically about the turret and about differentiating features that only the T-54 has. So first of all, the front of the turret has a whopping 200 millimeters of armor, and since it's sloped, the effective thickness is even more than that. You can see why the Brits were so scared when one of these drove onto their embassies. Now, onto the main armament. The T-54, this particular T-54, is armed with a 100 millimeter D-10TG gun. Now, we can differentiate this from the earlier D-10T gun on the T-3485, or not the T-3485, the, T the T-44, because it's got a bore evacuator on the far end of the cannon. 
what the bore evacuator does is it pulls all the gases out of the cannon after the gun is fired so they don't go back into the fighting compartment and distract the crew. Now, another differentiating feature on the T-54 is this vent up here at the top. We can know that this is a T-54 turret and not a T-55 turret because the T-55 is fully NBC protected. This means that it is protected against nuclear, biological and chemical attacks. Unfortunately for the T-54, this vent is probably not too good at keeping out radioactive fallout or chemical or biological contaminants. Finally, we have the Dushka anti-aircraft machine gun mount on top. This is a feature not on the later T-55 series tanks, but it is on this T-54 tank. What this means is this is most likely a T-54A tank or a later version of the early T-54 models, but definitely not the T-54-1 model because this has a much more modern looking turret, much more similar to the T-55. That's about it for the exterior. Up top, we have the two commander's hatches, but we'll go more into that in the video after this one when we focus on the internals of the tank. See you around for that one, guys.